There you go. Cool. cool. Thanks, Danny. Yep. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll give people a minute to come on in from their other sessions. Hope you're having a great day two at the BRIC Summit today. Um, I'm Matthew Wayne. We'll be talking about grant writing today, uh, starting about in a minute or so. For those people uh, who are here, if you want to drop your name and where you're at, what you do, are you in education, are you a nonprofit? Love to know if you have some experience or if this is all brand new to you. Uh, from Paris. Great to have you here. We'll give people uh, maybe 30 more seconds and then we'll get started. All right, let's get started. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, my name is Matthew Waney. I'm going to be talking about uh, grant writing um, and just how you can use that for your nonprofit, for your education, uh, for whatever it is you might be working on or looking to do. Maybe you're an artist looking to get a grant yourself. A um, little bit about myself. Um, uh, I've been uh, teaching for over 20 years. I, I'm in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles Unified. I teach both video production and animation. Uh, I got introduced to uh, Brick back in 2018 uh, when they uh, did sort of their first pilot program working with high school students, and they took 12 of my students uh, to a VFX uh, studio uh, for two days, uh, Saturday, Sunday, eight hours a day, and sort of showed them how to make their uh, animatics, had to work with uh, industry people, and uh, I've been working with uh, Brick ever since and, and help out with their as their educational uh, director. Uh, over the years, I've written over oh, uh, nearly $3 million in grants. Uh, I was honored a couple of years ago to be recognized as the National Magnet Teacher of the Year. And uh, along with the writing grants, uh, I was also the uh, author of BRIC's uh, current uh, uh, apprenticeship program that is focusing on animation, game design, and VFX that is approved at both at the state level in California and nationally at the DOL. So, all right, let's get into this. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today, uh, a number of things. Um, and for those who just joined us, you know, drop some stuff into the uh, chat. Let me know where you're from, uh, if you're in education, nonprofit. Maybe you're an artist uh, looking to to try to try uh, try to write some grants. Uh, just sort of going through my experience uh, over the years of of how I got to um, have some success and tips and I've had along the way. So I want to start off with just you know wanting to give my students a boost. Um, uh, as I said, I teach in Los Angeles. Uh, I teach at a Title One school, uh, so most of my students come from low income families. Uh, so our Budgets at our school aren't always great, especially for the pathways that I teach for, for uh, animation and, and video production. That's a lot of expensive equipment if you want to st stick with industry standard stuff. Um, and I started there about 10 years ago uh, to help build the video production program. And then uh, a year later, the animation program. When I first walked in, this is what we had. We had eight little point and shoot cameras. Um, that was it. We didn't really have camera, uh, sorry, computers to do editing or stuff like that. So we kind of Started from there, but as just, you know, thinking, you know, I want to be able to get stuff that my students can use that's really going to take them to the next level. Um, and since then, uh, helping to build this uh, department, uh, my video production and animation uh, classes now have professional DSLR cameras, tripods. We uh, completely built up a, a Mac lab where we got 36 computers. The kids can do all of their work there in class. Uh, we got industry software. Um, great audio light kits um we also took one classroom that was not being used and uh, while it isn't a soundproof studio it's definitely a great space where we can go in and do our exercises 
our kids and my animation kids can be working with uh, our partners at Nickelodeon and stuff like that. So it's just good to have that space um, and get a little bit of sound, sound, soundproofing to that as well. All right, but let's get into some of the basics. Before we really get into exact things within a grant, um, let's just kind of talk about some of the overall things you want to keep in mind and think about that I've found have really made my proposals stronger along the way. Uh, and to start off with, uh, I can't say this enough. Um, you just want to document everything. You want to take pictures, you want to take photos, and, and people are already doing this uh, to a lot of degrees. But I do meet people in education who are like, yeah, I don't really have photos of what my students have done or field trips we've gone on or anything like that. And even if you think it's small, take some pictures because you never know later on when those things are going to be great as far as the evidence to help support what your current proposal is and or to show stuff that you've already done. Because uh, we all know in this day and age, you know, it is the visuals, it's the media, whether it is a video, whether it's a photo of your students at work, uh, your students, uh, the final projects that they had done, because um, that stuff always can be used and utilized um, to really help strengthen what you're asking for. Number two, uh, I really try to make it bigger than my organization, bigger than just my classroom. Uh, so if you can bring in outside uh, collaborations and, and, and outside um, if you're at a school, it could even be within. Um, I'm at a span school, I think I said. So sometimes we'll do collaborations between my, my high school students and a middle school students. Uh, so I'll write grants about that. And ultimately, it's it's about the impact. It's about how many people are going to be benefiting from that grant, from the, the funding that you're trying to secure. And obviously, these funders uh, will have limited resources, have limited funding. And if they can only pick 10 um, recipients or 50 recipients, whatever it might be, uh, they want their dollars to be going to it and affecting as many people as they can. So think beyond just your own organization. I also will tie it into a community issue. Uh, and here's some uh, along the edge here uh, that we could do. Um, and a lot of times it depends year to year. Sometimes it is specific about, um, to things that are ha affecting my students, their parents, their families, sometimes it's the neighborhood in general. Uh, and I'll get into some examples later on. But again, just you having a bigger vision for it of just simply saying, oh, can I get some iPads? While that's not a bad request, like if you pick iPads and you say, and it's going to help some of the uh, environmental issues that we see in our in our community parks or things like that, um, it can just have a bigger effect for what you're asking for. Technology, technology, technology. Now that was pretty easy for me again in film and in animation. Um, you know, a lot of my requests were about technology. Um, you know, I, I sometimes we'll have you know educators come to me as like, oh, you know, I'm an elementary teacher. I'm just trying to get some great art supplies and just you know pencils and papers and and stuff like that. Um, and that is a, a a legit request and stuff like that. But a lot of times the funders are looking. You know, they want to have a, a sexy story to tell. They want to have like a really impactful story to tell as well. Um, and they want to sort of take it to the next level. And so if you can integrate some technology into that, uh, especially if that is a, a need that you and your organization have, um, take advantage of it. Because then again, when they're saying we got a computer, um, we were able to build out this computer lab for this school or for this organization, um, it just uh, sort of gives that bigger impact again from the, from the funder side. Tell that amazing story. I mean, we've all heard this back when we were applying for college. Uh, for those who did, you know, oh, you know, you were just a number. It's just an application. You know, how are they going to know you? You got to really have to set yourself off. And it's the same way. Uh, and this kind of ties back to, to sort of documenting stuff and taking those pictures, taking those photos. I mean, to be able to show like, here's the impact that we're having on these students, on these um, people who are using our nonprofit. Um, to really sort of talk about it and, and see that change. Because if it is just, oh, you know, computers software, whatever it might be. Um, but if you can show and talk about how that has impact, you know, student X or um, or person who's a, a part of your organization uh, in certain ways uh, can really just sort of sell it even more. All right. Uh, so again, keeping those sort of larger, um, higher level things in mind, now to sort of get into the specifics. Now, I always have people say like, oh, is there like a sample you know, grant out there, something like that. And there really isn't. And, and one of the biggest reasons for that is because what a grant will look like, what an application form will look like varies so much. Like I have done one that has literally been like a Google form that's been a paragraph. Uh, I've done ones that have been four pages, two pages. I've done ones that have been 150 pages that needed so much as far as evidence and support and um, things like that. And, and usually that comes to like whatever amount you're asking for. If you're asking for $100, $250 for something, um, a lot of times it's a pretty short, it's a pretty quick um, application. 
when you're asking for hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, you know, they are really looking to vet and decide which organizations, which schools, which districts are really, um, you know, able to one, use the money, but also be able to then use it efficiently and be able to show and, and sort of document and, and do all the reports after that. So what I'm showing here is sort of these I tend to find are the pieces that almost any grant you're going to apply for are you are things that you need. And ultimately, if you kind of have these pieces ready to go, you can kind of put them together as the um, request, as the application requires it. So you're going to need, a, you know, the history of your organization, you know, your school, your program, your nonprofit. Um, and the great thing is once you do this, I mean, it's done. It's not like your history is going to change that much. Maybe you got to tweak it here or there, depending on what you're asking for in a specific time um along those lines and you know as far as the school you know when i started at, at my school um at, at, uh, there like you know it already exists on the website like it might already exist for your organization so you're really kind of just taking that and making sure it's ready to go for a grant they want to know about the targeted population that you're working with as i said i'm at a title one school so a lot of my students come from um lower uh, socioeconomic households um, we tend to have uh, students from populations that um are sort of underrepresented in animation game design vfx um and so just to be able to talk about that uh, i tend to be a small school um and so uh, we have 280 students total in our high school um but again there's some grants out there that are specifically just for title one schools there are some out there that are just for the arts uh, so again, you want to make sure that you have that defined and ready to go. What are your project needs? And again, asking for a, you know, a dozen iPads, um, not a bad request, but like, what's that project? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do that's going to have a greater impact? I'm going to teach career skills. I'm going to teach things where my kids can go out and, uh, apply for entry level jobs. If you're talking about high school kids and older kids, um, just being able to have that sort of larger, um, thing that's going on and then the justifications that go wrong with it. Um, I was also tie in like, how is that gonna affect the uh, donors um, and stuff? So there's a chance where, um, you know, we will often at the, at the school rat, you know, we will recognize our donors in our yearbook each year. We will uh, put that, if we're doing films, we'll put, you know, sponsored and supported by uh, that. And that, you know, means something to them as well to, you know, and they're not just taking the money and running with it, but again, trying to build that relationship because ultimately a lot of the grants that that for my school that I've written and, and applied for, they end up being year to year to year because again, they give, give us the funding. We're able to sort of showcase what we did with that and uh, sort of see that, you know, they can see that that funding is being used for, for great things. And then uh, if you sort of uh, touched on this, you know, just that impact, the greater the impact, the more uh, likely that you are going to be selected for what you're doing. Um, and again, that's where it could be your targeted population. Maybe it's your targeted population then helping people outside in the community, depending upon what your um, your uh, organization's focus is, but uh, really stressing and, and talking about that impact. And I will say the impact uh, will kind of change from application to application. I know for me, if I'm doing a project that is getting um, new technology for my classroom, that's gonna be different than if I'm getting uh, grants that help us uh, actually do field trips to industry uh, studios and stuff like that. And then ultimately, it's about building that legacy. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about grants along the way uh, that have gotten us some, some pretty big um, funding amounts and things like that. But that's not how it started. Sometimes you got to start small. You know, I think the first grant I wrote was to $500, got a couple thousand dollar ones, and you got up to like $2,500. Um, and then, you know, as you keep building it there, it's, it does a couple of things. One, it continues to have evidence of the great successes that your organization, your school has had. But also shows uh, to your um, people that you're applying to that, you know what, we've received other grants, we're able to follow through, we're able to take care of stuff, and really be able to show that, you know, you can trust us with the funding, and we're going to use it as we said we're going to do. All right, I'm not going to really go over these, but these might be other things that you might have uh, asked for in a, a grant. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I wouldn't necessarily try to get ahead of all these things. But then once you have a grant that's asking you for, let's say, um, what outside funding sources you have, then you'll have that piece, again, already ready to go. And a lot of times at this point for my school, I can drop in, you know, 50 percent of what they're asking me for because we've already written that section. We've already written that part. And again, it's not always just an easy drop in. You're going to have to tweak it and change it here. Some stuff gets updated. My demographics change every year, you know, not dramatically, but but enough where we'll go in and we'll kind of tweet that so and the other things i'd point out and then we'll move on you know the letters of support and visuals to highlight your students your your you know people that you're helping in your uh nonprofit um can really be beneficial as well so okay 
Um, so I was talking earlier about, you know, sort of having a story uh, to tell. And so this is an example um, in a share this video and some of the applications I've done, or I'll write about this uh, student. Um, I started off my teaching career doing Teach for America uh, in rural Texas, uh, which at the time was the poorest school district at, at the time. Um, and just, you know, a lot of my students uh, were migrant students or were living in what I called them the colonia. They didn't have electricity, didn't have running water. So it was just a really challenge for them to uh, sometimes, you know, be engaged in the classroom because they were really literally, wor literally worrying about stuff that was like, you know, survival and like making sure that they could pay their bills and stuff like that. So um, this is just a story about one student um, and, and we all have a student like Luis. So let me share this. I realized pretty early uh, that I really enjoyed being a teacher, that it was really more than just a job for me. Um, I started off teaching in rural Texas. I was a member of Teach for America. Uh, so I taught in a small little uh, rural border town. Um, and one student specifically, Luis, uh, he came from a migrant family, um, you know, very shy and reserved, um, was really struggling to, to learn English and, and speak better. Um, but he was really dedicated. He was in my uh, classroom at lunchtime and after school uh, almost every day, at first just asking about homework, and then really started opening up, just curious about uh, what it took to go to college, what it took to uh, do certain jobs, you know, what should he be studying. Um, and by the end of uh, my third year, I taught down there for three years, um, I taught drama as well. He was trying out for roles and just, you know, small roles, but still trying out. It was just such an amazing transition to see him do. Um, I went back that fourth year uh, that he graduated just to see, and uh, he was the first of his family to graduate. And uh, I moved to Los Angeles, and uh, four or five years after that, I received a package. And it was this large frame of his college uh, gown and stole that he sent to me and basically said, Mr. Wayne, uh, without you, without those conversations and your support, uh, I never would have graduated. So, uh, you know, it's just moments like that that, uh, you know, it's more than a job. So, um, so again, we all have like students and, and, and people that you, you work with and you support in your organizations that are like Luis, that again, you really have had a, a great impact and great effect on them. Um, and just sharing those stories uh, when it ties into what you're looking to do for your grant pr proposal uh, can really, again, add some some stuff to sort of set it apart. So, um, all right, before I move on to the next section, I just know if there's any, I, I can't see the chat here. I don't know if there's any questions that have been dropped in yet. We can draw you a couple here and then I'll get into the next section. Um, any questions? Uh, I see Ingrid has their hand up. Uh, Ingrid, did you? I have a question you want to share if you can use the Q&A function. Uh, so you have a question, Wayne. Can you show the prior screen with the project needs, etc.? If you could uh, reshow that slide. Uh, the one with the list of all the different things that people were talking about. Yeah, it yeah. says with the project and, needs and such. Sure. And while you're showing that, uh, uh, sorry for mispronouncing this, uh, Sierra Johnson uh, wants to know, where do you go to search for grants? Yeah, a um, couple things. And just so people are aware that this is being recorded. So if you want to go back and, and check this out later on, uh, the, any of the slides and things like that, you can definitely check it out. Uh, great question, um, Ingrid. Um, as far as like, you know, I will just do searches uh, online, you know, and it'll just be different search things as far as, you know, arts and, and film and animation that really fit in. As I mentioned, I, I'll mention like, you know, Title I schools, uh, since that is something that my school is. Um, and then they're just different things depending upon what, you know, I know in California, the, a lot of the uh, grants uh, will also come out from the, the California Department of Education. Those tend to be a little bit bigger grants, uh, and you might need to be like a, a collection of, of schools and things like that to, to um, apply for those. But really just sort of keep searching and keep searching. And sometimes, you know, you'll just kind of change it up. And, and I'll talk later on, you know, sometimes you got to think outside the box as well uh, for that. But um, it's really just a matter of, of sort of doing searches. And I will say the other thing, you know, being in Los Angeles, but I think even outside of like a bigger city, like check with your local um, banks, uh, um, uh, different credit unions, different um, organizations, because sometimes they will have, and again, these might be $500, $250, $1,000, 
but usually, you know, you're from the community, they're from the community, you know, it's, it's certainly not a layup, nothing's guaranteed when you're writing grants, but, but that'd be a great way to just really start off. And then it can help build connections. And even if they don't have funding for, for you or for specifically to what your organization or your school is needs, then they may be like, oh, you know what, but I know this other organization and things like that. And, and sort of as that word spreads out there and people it's, it will eventually start knowing about you and your organization, um, people will come to you with different grants as well. Great question. So keep dropping questions into the chat. Uh, I'm gonna move on to our next section here, but then we can go back to taking some more questions later on. So what I wanna share with you now is sort of uh, one of uh, sort of the proposals that I had done that really kind of was the first big return that I got on a grant um, that I had done. As I said, I did a couple small things here and there, uh, just trying to get some stuff to help my kids out. So I'm gonna sort of walk you through the, the thought process that I went through. Um, and you'll see photos here of sort of the after uh, of effects of, of what the grant was able to showcase. So obviously that happened after the grant came in, which I can show you here, but um, just sort of think about, you know, how we were documenting stuff and really kind of using our community and our school to get this done. So my driving question was really, how can we create positive career change for our students and also by engaging in the community? And so what it ultimately came down to is um, we decided to make some socially conscious documentaries about existing nonprofits in our community that actually were helping students prep for college. So these are real nonprofits. These are the real organizations, things that a lot of my students were already involved with, already participating in. And what I needed to do is I had cameras by this point. So uh, we, we definitely advanced up from our eight point shoots, but we still at that point had some some pretty nice, you know, not great, but pretty nice cameras, but things that we definitely weren't able to sort of go out and take off of our campus. So what I was trying to get was eight inexpensive yet professional cameras. So my students could go off campus because if we were going to be doing interviews, if we were going to be doing these things about existing um, uh, nonprofits, we, we couldn't just film on our campus. They weren't necessarily coming to us to, to do this filming. So, so that was my request. Uh, and basically here's a story of how I put it together. Again, not my proposal, but here's the story. The related. We started with parents and uh, people in the community already. And what we found out pretty quickly is that, as I said, a lot of parents were already sending their kids to places, students were already doing things. And these are real um, organizations uh, around my school First one was Urban Techs, and uh, basically it is focused on young men of color. And over the summer, I think it was like a four week, and, and they still existed. So if you're in Los Angeles at all, you can check them out. Where they taught the the young men uh, coding, app design, how to be entrepreneurs, and then they actually had to pitch their presentation, and they could get anywhere from two hundred to I believe it was like twelve hundred dollars uh, to actually build and put together their app and design it and launch it. So we did a documentary on them, and these documents are like three to five minutes. Um, talking about their their mission. We also uh, had kids who had been an active part of the Salvation Army's Red Shield Center. Uh, that was new to me. I was familiar with the, the Salvation Army, but um, they kind of basically, a lot of in LA will have like a boys and girls club type um, component to them where kids can go there right after school, gives them a chance to play, to, you know, kind of while their parents are still working, a place to go to before they get picked up, they get some tutoring help. So I had students who had gone there as elementary students and even middle student students, middle school students. And then as high school students, they were there as mentors. We did a documentary on them. 24th Street uh, Theater is kind of iconic in our neighborhood. Uh, same type of thing. They offer after school stuff, weekend stuff where kids can go in and learn public speaking. They can act, they can do tech stuff um, also. So again, a lot of the younger kids will participate there and some of the older kids can be mentors. We did a documentary on that. Um, I was aware of this, but I didn't know at the time that we had students and you'll see this picture here. There's four of these students here are my students at the time. Uh, the LAPD has a cadets program. These kids are waking up at 430 in the morning to go there to like learn discipline. And then some of these students weren't always the strongest in the classroom. And it just really changed their life of uh, how they were able to focus and really kind of take themselves a little bit more seriously and, and, and get those goals and get those steps moving forward. So again, we were, did this and this was all in the students. They had to go there and ask, you know, you have to ask permission. It wasn't me going out to do this. And again, as a high school teacher, I can do that. If you're a middle school teacher, an elementary school teacher, you know, you kind of have to do more logistics and setting stuff up. If you're looking to do films as part of any grants that you're looking to, to look for funding for. But again, we did a documentary on that. And then what I did not know is that the LA fire department also had a cadet program. And so this student was like, Mr. Wayne, I've been doing this for the last like six months, nine months. And so I was like, that is phenomenal. I did not know that they had that at the high school level. So they went in, they talked to their supervisors and they let them go in and shoot one afternoon. And the footage that they got was phenomenal. So we had done a documentary on that. Ultimately in the end, we ended up doing, I think 14, 
um, between 14 and 18 documentaries that year because I did it across two classes. And again, that was all in my proposal within my grant. Um, I just want to make sure we have time and uh, you'll be able to I'll play this later on when we come back to it. This is one that they had done for one of the organizations in our thing. So, and the other thing I put in there is really about the skills, like why, you know, these cameras, these documentaries, and I talked about like the skills that the students would be able to do. And I think documentary filmmaking is the strongest thing to do for younger filmmakers, younger students. You know, they all want to do, you know, their uh, narratives and tell their stories, but most of their scripts are about, you know, basically it's a, some other rendering of their superheroes, whether they're Marvel or DC fans. And then, you know, they put their act, their friends in as actors and like, no, no, my buddy, he's playing this like 65 year old guy. And it's like, your 12 year old buddy doesn't look like that. You know, they're acting, you know, whatever. The documentary, if you ask uh, great questions, you're going to get authentic, amazing answers. And it just really resonates and you get some really, really strong performances. But uh, what I stress, uh, you know, these students are collaborating uh, and communicating with their classmates. They work in teams of three or four on each of these uh, once they decided which organization they were going to focus on. They were developing interviewing skills, uh, not only asking the questions, but they would practice being interviewed and just to work on that, getting more comfortable with their public speaking. Uh, and while they weren't public speaking in front of, you know, dozens of people, like being in front of a camera, they knew it was being captured. So they really kind of worked hard both in front of the camera and behind the camera. Learning how to tell a good story through editing. Uh, there are different techniques. You know, we've all seen documentaries. Some of them really engage us. Some of them bring us to tears, make us laugh. You know, it's really about how you're telling that, which goes back to the questions you're asking, but also being able to put that together. So their skill set of editing. And then last but not least, obviously, uh, and learning some industry skills from the cameras we're using, the microphones, the tripods, and stuff like that. That all was in there. And then for them to be actually community citizens. So they would go out to these organizations and interview there. Sometimes they would you know, film there on their sites, showcasing whether they're tutoring, whether they're teaching kids how to do the coding, like I was talking about, really doing some stuff like that. So you can see sort of how I took that request for cameras. And again, if you got one request is like, I need, you know, eight cameras that I can shoot with versus I need eight cameras. And here's all the impact and all the stuff going on with it. That makes it a, you know, one of those is gonna, probably going to be evaluated a little bit stronger coming out of it. So you really want to be able to think. And it takes, you know, a lot of like, and things change. It doesn't always work out perfectly from your proposal. But, you know, the fact that you thought it through that you put all this type of stuff in there can make it really stronger and, and more impactful. And again, I think this right here, submitting this in is, is a great chance. It doesn't guarantee anything. Nothing ever does with grant writing. But this, you know, all the different things of students interacting with the community, making films, having this uh, ability to learn these skills, uh, I think that's going to be a really strong one. But I will say I wasn't happy there. I really wanted to push it a little bit more. So we did one more thing. And again, this was all in my proposal when I was asking for these grants. We also organized to have a film festival based on these films. Um, and so... What we did, and this was the only part that I, I was a part, everything else was sort of student driven. Uh, we found a uh, theater in downtown Los Angeles that was willing to donate their space, 220 seats on a Sunday afternoon. We were able to bring in that. We ultimately decided out of the 18 or so uh, documentaries we made to film six of them. So we reached out to them and we were able to sort of do that. Not only did we bring in parents and students from our things, but in the, um, in the uh, lobby itself, those six organizations got to set up tables and sort of showcase and show what their program was. Parents came in. I didn't even know that you guys did this. I'm signing my son or daughter up for this. So our kids were in there. It's like, oh, I didn't know that was here. I'm really interested in that. And it, again, really brought more community impact together for that. Um, we had an ad design class at my school at the time. So we uh, used them to help uh, create some promotions for it. Uh, so that also was in that, how it was going to be not just my film classes, but across multiple classes at our school. Um, some of my seniors did some pep rallies to sort of really bring the attention to that. Uh, I had some of my seniors also be like, Mr. Waney, these ninth graders today, they don't know what's good for them. You know, they should be going to this. They should be learning more about this type of stuff. And so they're like, can we go around and like talk to them about this uh, organizations and how they should sign up and how they should come to our film festival? It's like, that's great. Uh, again, it's on you guys to set it up. You, they could not go to any of the core classes, but it's like if you talk to some of the elective classes, because uh, that's what always happens to us elective teachers, right? Uh, it's always into ours. It's like, you know, the last five minutes of a class, if the teacher approves it, you guys can go around and sort of like share information about that. So we did that. Um, we had an after school club uh, film. Uh, it, was, it was a girls group of like making film and media. Um, if you're in Los Angeles, the Girls Build L.A., uh, organization is pretty phenomenal with what they do with that. So um, they were kind of, they wanted to build a website 
that had all the information about what we were doing and stuff like that. Uh, and then we had some social media blasts that went out as well. Um, again, for our showcase, we had people come in there. We had a raffle. It was just amazing. We had standing room only. You know, they, we, we couldn't get everybody in there uh, that wanted to. Uh, and that's where it was really just fantastic as far as what we were doing. So again, on top of all the stuff in the classroom, this sort of, I just kind of made the impact even larger and stronger with our proposal. So um, I sent that out to uh, five or six different places um, from that. Um, and what we ended up finding out is that uh, ultimately like three or four of them uh, gave us some funding for that. And I ended up getting $30,000 um, from that proposal. Uh, definitely more than what I needed from those eight cameras. And, you know, once they kind of came in, I reached out there, hey, you know, we were able to get other funding too. Can we also use this for lighting stuff? Can we also use this for whatever? So, you know, just being up front, you know, asking, you know, our, our, our needs have changed. Is it possible to do this? They aren't always going to be able to tweak stuff and change things, but usually people are pretty receptive. It's not, I guess not people, but organizations and funders are pretty receptive to that. Again, just being upfront about it, being transparent about it. And we were able to sort of use that for additional things uh, within our program to help build it out. Um, so again, it was just really fantastic. And that sort of like got me into thinking like, all right, so I definitely need these bigger things, these community impact things, things that I mentioned earlier to really sort of help us get that across. So um, I do want to share this video. So in the midst of, of what we were doing to make this happen, this is our after school uh, girls film club. Um, somebody else found out about it and they did a, a new story on us. I want to share this with you as well. Only 7% of Hollywood's films are being directed by females. Yet in 2016, 51% of movie tickets were purchased by women. As major contributors to this industry, shouldn't there be more female storytellers? I'm here to meet the next generation of female filmmakers. I think it's really sad that women are so underrepresented in the filmmaking world because we have a lot of stories to tell that are just as strong as men's stories. If you watch a movie and you actually sit there and you watch the credits, it seems kind of impossible. But like when I started taking my first film one class and I was like, oh, like this is something anyone could do if they really wanted to. This school is LAUSD USC Media Arts and Engineering Magnet. So to me, I feel that it's great to be able to help train the next generation of filmmakers. And we've had some young women who've just really taken off. They want to be directors, they want to be cinematographers now. I mean, the kids already have cameras in their hands, whether it's in their phone or their iPad or whatever it might be. We're just showing them how to be more professional with whatever they're shooting. Girls Build LA is a all-girls leadership project. We are in 50 schools in LA County. Unfortunately, it is, I would say, still harder to be a woman than it is a man, both in, in school and in the workplace. The way that this program empowers young artists, I think, is it's pretty valuable that they connect them with a real-world mentor. In terms of storytelling, why do you think it's so important to get their point of views out? It's really putting the cameras and the equipment into their hands, but one thing I love to do with my classes, uh, whether it's a documentary or a, a narrative story, we always ground it some way into their life, into issues that they're dealing with where they can make it personal. And to be able to put your own voice into that, to tell your stories, especially for young women, to be able to see things that represent them and that they can identify with. Classes like like Mr. Waney's help because you, you see that it's doable making films. We need to understand that we do have the power now to actually go so high in the film industry so we shouldn't just, you know, sit back and be the secretary and the little like assistant that brings coffee to the director. Like we can be the director and we have equally creative minds. And there's more girls born every day so there shouldn't be a reason why we can't. For more information, please visit girlsbuildla.weebly.com. And again, and that was something that obviously I did not even know that was going to happen or I have it intended, but I can tell you since that video has come out, we've put that into a number of our uh, proposals as well to, again, just showcase what we've done and what our uh, students have done and how they've been able to uh, achieve different things. So one uh, footnote on that video, um, one of the first uh, young women who spoke there, um, uh, Roosevelt, she actually has uh, recently become one of Brick's uh, apprentices. She's currently working out at uh, HBO. 
uh, as an FX uh, production manager. So really proud. Uh, you know, she ended up going to U, uh, UCLA's film school and uh, has graduated from there and is now off at being apprenticed through Brick. So uh, again, just sort of seeing that students take advantage of that, build it into a their choices for college and for careers has been pretty impactful as well. So, all right, uh, I'm just gonna wrap it up here with some, uh, some final tips and, and things just to reiterate as moving forward. Um, and then we'll have some time for more questions, but uh, just things to think about. Um, don't be afraid of writing a grant, okay? Uh, as I've hopefully, uh, from today, I've really tried to break it into small doable pieces. Um, again, don't go in, oh, I gotta write a 20 page uh, application. No, it's like a half a page for this thing. It's a half a page for this thing as you move forward and kind of like breaking it down into very doable pieces. Uh, and you don't have to do it alone. Uh, find, co uh, coll uh, co uh, collaborate with uh, your colleagues uh, on campus. Uh, if you're working across a couple different campuses, you know, you do this part, I'll do this part, where again, it doesn't have to be a heavy lift for just one person doing these grants. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some of these things are already written. If you go to your school's website, if you go to your website for your uh, nonprofit, you know, you probably already have a history, you probably have a mission statement, you probably already have like the focus of what you guys are, are looking to do. So, you know, again, don't just pull them and just drop them in without looking at them. You probably have to tweak them here, there, or just, I would often have to take stuff that was like school-based and then make sure it was tied into my uh, animation and, and video production pathways in my departments there. Uh, once you've done it, uh, you can reuse those things again. Again, as I said, uh, you know, I might be using 50 to 60% of something that I've written before. And again, I'm gonna have to tweak it here and there, but I don't have to go out and redo the history and do those parts all over again. Uh, and this was sort of the one thing that, uh, you know, as a teacher, I know many of you in here are teachers as well. Like, you know, we have enough stuff in the classroom to already do. If I'm chasing every single grant and I've got to write a whole new proposal, like that would just be too much. So what I do each year is I pick one big project. Maybe we need to upgrade our computers for our, our computer lab. One year we added in um, a music and technology class. Uh, I, I don't teach that, but it fits in with my pathway and stuff like that. So we wrote something to be able to get film or not, sorry, audio equipment and recording equipment for that teacher. Um, after we did our stuff at our high school, we moved it down to our middle school. So there's been different years we focused on the middle schools. So again, I, I pick one specific project for that year, write that grant, and then try to find multiple places to send it out to. Um, so that again, I'm just doing it once per year, and then we see how that goes from there. And then a few other resources, you know, people are asking again, sort of do your general searches, but, you know, also try to think outside the box. You know, again, I'm a film teacher, I'm a CTE teacher. This was back before COVID. Uh, I was just, you know, just, again, putting in different search words, different things like this. And this popped up back when Hamilton was, you know, at the, the height of all heights, uh, when it first was released, uh, the Gilder Lerman Institute uh, did a national tour where it would go around to different school districts. Um, and it was, it was under history. So obviously I just, I don't know what I was searching for, but it was also a title one school. So I did the application for that. And that year we ended up taking our entire junior class to go see a free matinee screening of this. Um, and, and we won. So it provided for our busing there. Now, a part of it, the students uh, had to do a couple lessons. Uh, I think it was like a three week, a mini lesson in their history classes. And we had the history teachers on board for that. But the students also had to make a, a creative project. So it could have been a poem, could have been a story, could have been a, a song, whatever. And every student had to do this. And we had one of our students selected. And this was, she's a, a great student. She was really focused, really sort of embraced like my film and animation classes, but she was very quiet, very shy. Uh, but she ended up writing a, she, she took an existing song and then redid the lyrics to fit into the, the historical components. And she was selected to perform up on the stage at the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles. Now, I know many people aren't from Los Angeles, but this is like a 2,700 person uh, venue. And she was up there and just like crushed it. She was amazing. And they ended up doing a, a, um, a news report uh, and she was one of the people they featured in it. So again, we didn't know those things were happening, but we put those uh, details into different grants when it's, again, when it's appropriate, don't just pour something in. Um, but again, it was something where I was just kind of randomly doing it. Um, and I guess one other one that's not up here, it doesn't do it anymore, but uh, one other uh, random grant that I found was uh, from an oil company. Or again, I, who, what teacher's looking up for an oil company? Um, but you know, oil companies have a lot of money, they've got their foundation, stuff like that. And basically the requirement was you had, your school had to exist within a 20 mile radius of one of their headquarters. And if that was the case, you could apply. And I think it was for like $2,500 or $4,000, something like that, um, which again, at that time was the biggest one I'd apply for. And we ended up getting that. Uh, and I think what part of it was like, a lot of people just weren't applying for that. So do think outside the box um, in relation to that. 
All right, so today you learn to photograph everything. Storm a project, see the importance of community and technology. Really think about those moving personal stories that are about your program, from people you've affected and impacted. Uh, think about breaking this down into doable short parts. And at the end of the day, this has kind of always been in the back of my, my mind. You know, if you never write a grant, the best you will ever earn for your students is zero dollars. You're just guaranteed to never have that chance to win. If you end up uh, finishing it, then the very least you could ever do is zero dollars. And so far to this day, um, I've definitely earned over two million dollars in them and it's still counting. So, again, take that approach. Be willing to try that first one's always the hardest one because you got to do everything for the first time. But break it down, make sure that it's easy to do from there. So. Um, Okay, so let's take some questions. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me through this, you can share your email and stuff like that and, and, and share any information like how this was helpful for you along the way. And I'll sometimes like just blast out different things with different grants that are out there. But um, Danny, other questions that people might have dropped into the chat? We've got about- uh, Nothing in the Q&A right now. Okay. So if anyone has anything, I see Raquel has their hand up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you guys can speak, unfortunately. I think you have to drop stuff into if, the if, if you want to chat. talk, let me know. And I can, uh, if you prefer to talk in person, I can unmute individual people. I don't want you to drop it. Any questions? Uh, oh, is there a list of grant orgs that you can give? This is from Chris. Um, again, it's just it, because what your organization focuses on and stuff like that, um, it's usually better to do a search for, um, does Chris say if he's, um, I guess I don't know if it's a he or she, but uh, if they're an education or a nonprofit or it really will depend upon the focus. So, you know, if you guys are in elementary school, if you're a high school, if you're focused in like science and engineering, like it's really best to sort of search from that, like, because you just find them everywhere and, and anything in it, but it usually is focused a bit more on like what the end project is, uh, what sort of the background and nature of your school or your nonprofit um, or things like that. Um, so I would do a search like that's going to be much more useful than, and, and I, I don't know of anything that's like a, just a massive, massive list. A great question. All right. Anyone else have any other questions? How many folks are uh, brand new to grant writing? Anyone during their first one? Yeah, and as a first time uh, grant writer, I mean, I really just stress, you know, don't be afraid, um, you know, and sometimes even just like, I know it's, uh, it's, it's March, you know, we're in, as far as teachers are concerned, it's not the end of the year, but it, it's pretty close to it, you know. You, you might not find something that you're really rushing into to be able to do it before this year, but that might be a summer thing to focus on. Uh, a couple of the other first grants I got uh, in Los Angeles, if anybody there is is, is Los Angeles um, centered, um, the uh, California uh, Credit Union, at least in LA, offers, and they do it twice a year, $500 grants to, I think it's 10 teachers at a time, or maybe it's 20. Um, but that was one where it was like, you know, it was a... Uh, it was essentially like two pages. It was a Google form. They want to know what you do, what students you work with, what's your project and stuff like that. So again, that's where, you know, if you're from a small uh, community in a rural area or, or you know, any, any size city, really like, check out some of the, the community, uh, sorry, the, um, the credit unions and the smaller banks and stuff like that, um, where they'll have something that is a little bit more, you know, again, your 250s, your 500s, it, it might not, you know, be able to change what's happening in your classroom as far as like equipment and stuff like that but it's like hey let's do one project let's bring in some guest speakers let's do a field trip somewhere uh and that is the other thing you know uh, we talk about grants but but sometimes just getting a field trip to somewhere in your community um can be can be something where again it doesn't cost you anything but people are willing to sort of support you on that so you know be willing to make those cold calls send out those emails you know obviously with like linkedin and and stuff like that um, from your Instagram and things, you know, if, if you reach out to somebody, they can be pretty, um, pretty supportive. And, and I'll share one other story. And again, it wasn't grant related, but as far as just being newer, um, you know, NPR, the radio station, uh, they've got stations all across the country. I reached out to one here in California. They were doing a thing called um, Sounds LA, and there were these 60 second audio stories. And uh, yeah, I loved them, thought they were great. I was like, hey, I, I sent them an email. I was like, hey, I'm looking to do this with my film kids. 
would you be willing to come in once or twice and just talk to them and walk them through it? And they ended up doing it. They ended up highlighting a few of uh, my kids programs, uh, sorry, stories on their program. Uh, so then kids had something they could write down. It was like, I was, I've been, you know, public, I've been uh, high, a broadcast on an NPR station. So, um, so again, just kind of reaching out and thinking about that project, people are looking to support it from there. So. Yeah. So Chris just wants to say that they've been working on grants for 10 years and uh, it was cool that you explain what they've gone through and appreciate the motivation. And they also dropped a link to their website in the Q&A awesome. for folks who want to check it out. And then uh, Lavona was asking about if the recording will be, if the doc videos will be online. Uh, later on. Are you referring to the ones that were in the presentation, Lavona? Or... Because the, the recording of the entire webinar will be on our, the brick one. Um, uh, yeah, so Matt, if you got the YouTube links, if you haven't have YouTube mm -hmm. links for the ones that were in the presentation, like the, the Uproxx video, if you happen to want to drop those. Yeah, uh, I can definitely try to pull those or people are sending something into this uh, bit.ly link. I, I can send them out through that too. Let me see if I can, because they're embedded. So it'll take me a second to find them, but I can definitely search for the Uprox one. Stop sharing here for a second. Um, we probably have time for a couple more questions if anybody else has anything. Yeah, we have one more question. We have another question here from Rachel. Uh, could any of this apply to individual artist grants? Like if they're looking for partially fund a personal environmental film, et cetera, um, how, how is that process like in the United States? Is it worth pursuing for individuals? Yeah, for individuals, I mean, th this process would work the same way. Again, it's really about then finding the organization that's going to support whether you're a filmmaker, an animator, you're an a, a, a artist um, of whatever whatever means, whatever your medium is. Um, yeah, and it's really just finding that because because I will say one thing to sort of save you time and save you effort. Like, if it doesn't really fit with what you're asking, with what you're doing, I I, I probably wouldn't apply because uh, does it? You could write the best. Uh, proposal and have a great thing but if it doesn't really align with what their current request is with what their current thing is um you know it's probably just going to be shot down because a lot of these places will get you know 10 to 1 100 to 1 applicants for for the number of spots that they have to give out things so um i do know sometimes you know for the individual artists it might be a little bit more challenging uh, but again you really want to find something that that fits into your oh i do documentaries oh i do a uh, narrative oh i do stuff that really involves a certain community um in your neighborhood or, or wherever it might be, depending on what the topic of your your um, your project is, uh, if we're talking about film and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, these steps in, in, in this process can work from the individual level, to the classroom, for school, for the district, uh, and stuff like that. And you know, and I've written like uh, out of the uh, close to three million dollars, I've written about a million for my own school, and then you know, I've worked for other uh, organizations as well. Uh, written some stuff for Brick as well as other school districts. Um, you know, you you can kind of use these things, these same steps and the same approaches. Those scale to large or small stuff. So. All right. Anyone have any last quick questions? Uh, Chris, did you have a specific question about the school districts? So Chris is talking about uh, having some a lot of problems with school districts. You want to elaborate on that, Chris? Even if Chris can't elaborate, I can definitely elaborate on that <laughs> one. So, but we'll see if he wants to elaborate a little bit. Yeah, more there's a first. specific question. Oops, I don't know if that just played for you guys. I'm trying to find this abstract thing for you. Um, so it, as Chris might be typing in there. So uh, yeah, you definitely can have stuff where if you're in education, I mean, you kind of have to start at your at your school level. I mean, is your admin going to be a, approving of this? Uh, are they going to be supportive of it? Um, because at some schools, some districts, uh, your district or your school might take a cut of it. They might take a big cut of it. Uh, or they might um, not have. I mean, at my school, I will do a lot of the like I'll do the reports. I'll do a lot of the stuff that will follow up on grants that require that. Not all grants require you to do reports. Usually it's stuff that's a little bit bigger. Um, in in the amount that you're getting we'll do that so um the uh so i do that you know and after the first couple like my principal i mean they were 
hundred percent supportive of me. I mean, they're like, Oh, Mr. Wayne, what you're writing it all. You're bringing money in. I don't have to take stuff out of my budget. And it's going to be like great, great experiences for our students. Like do it. Um, and I do talk to my principal at the beginning of every year, just like, Hey, you know, I don't know what they're all are right now, but I'm going to probably do a few grants. I just want to make sure you're okay with that. And they give me this sort of blanket approval. And then as I actually get something, I go and we'll let them know, you know, I don't want to ever have anything caught to catch them off guard, but being in LA unified, uh, again, it is a second largest school district in the nation. They will, you know, they'll take a cut of grants and stuff like that. So, um, you just want to, again, think ahead to that, um, you know, smaller grants, they, don't care as much, but if it's a bigger grant, because again, they have their processing things to do like by, along those lines. Um, and then the good thing about LA Unified is as a CTE teacher, we have a district CTE department and they will help find grants for teachers and let them know about those at times. Um, so again, then we will be replying either within the district for certain grants or they will just let us know outside of that. So if those people are in school districts, you know, that might be a great way to find out about more too. Um, and so, yeah, Danny did drop in. Uh, that's the Up Rocks one uh, about uh, the film story that was shared there towards the end. So, yeah. all right, we got maybe three more minutes. Um, I do want to give you guys time to make it to your next session as well. Yeah. So maybe time for one last one. Uh, yeah. So last one is, can this approach also apply to a fiscal sponsorship? Um, I guess I'm not sure exactly what do you mean by fiscal sponsorship as far as just uh, this one is from an anonymous attendee so if you want to drop that in the q a uh, if you want to clarify a little bit there yeah i mean i i would assume again if you're asking an organization for funding like this can all benefit that again because they're going to ultimately want to know what your organization is like what are you asking for uh, is it a project-based thing is it an equipment-based thing what is going to be and then you know what is the justification for it um you know for the most part those things are, are always a part of of it whether it's a one page two page application or 150 page application um and then just depending upon that they will ask for other evidence and other stuff to support your request but yeah i don't know exactly what you mean by that but i would think you know if you're asking somebody for funding to help support a project or program that you as an individual or a school or a district or a nonprofit are looking to do uh this stuff could definitely work so Okay. All right. I want to thank everybody for being here, for being a part of this. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, uh, let me know uh, if you are able to drop into that bit.ly. Um, and what was helpful for you? What would you be grateful to help learn more things? But uh, take advantage of this. Take advantage of the great uh, sessions that are going on here at the Brick uh, Summit. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you at future Brick events. So have a great rest of your Saturday. Thank you. And thank you, Dan. Thank you so much, Swainy. Have a good one. Take care. See you all in the next session.